It's a privilege to welcome you this evening to our Wednesday Bible class, and we're going to continue our series with uh, prayers of the Bible. And tonight we are in the book of Lamentations. Uh, unless you are just an avid or dedicated reader of God's Word, uh, quite possibly not a book of Scripture where you've spent a lot of time. And so we're going to look at, uh, there are five chapters in Lamentations. We're going to look at uh, excerpts from four of those chapters uh, in just a moment. But I first want to begin with a word of prayer. Holy Father, as we come before you, may it be with humble hearts. We ask once again, Father, that you would forgive us for our sins, the things we've done and the things that we've left undone. And Father, I pray that you would uh, be with those people who are uh, in hospitals and cannot have family with them, those people in different parts of our country, different parts of our world, certainly different parts of our state, uh, that are dealing with uh, the coronavirus. And Father, I just pray that you be with those that are uh, working uh, at a feverish pace uh, to develop a, a vaccine. Father, I pray that you be with those that are working at an equal pace uh, to develop a medication uh, that would... Uh, help deal with the, the, the symptoms of this virus. And Father, I pray that you will be with all of us and our temperament in, uh, in the situation that we find ourselves in. And uh, so many are just getting tired of, of what we have to deal with right now. And Father, help us to be patient. Help us to be realistic. It's something that none of us have dealt with in our lifetime. And Father, I just pray uh, that, that you will just uh, be with us as uh, that we can deal with one another in kindness. Father, I pray that you be with those that are uh, dealing with uh, financial losses, uh, losses of jobs. And Father, that you will... Uh, allow them to get the help they need, that as they seek employment uh, elsewhere, that they, will, that they will find that. And Father, I pray that you uh, just be with us in our time in your word tonight, Father, and that you will, that you will bless our time uh, studying the book of Lamentations. We ask all this in the precious and holy name of Christ Jesus, and amen. Well, I uh, want to begin in uh, Lamentations chapter 1. The thing to understand about Lamentations, uh, it's kind of written as a sort of a, uh, an, an epilogue maybe uh, to the book of Jeremiah. Uh, the things that Jeremiah prophesies in, uh, in, in the book of Jeremiah, that the, uh, that the city of Jerusalem is going to be uh, taken over by the Babylonians. All those things that were prophesied uh, have now come to pass. And so uh, Lamentations is simply a, a book of prayer uh, uh, where these, uh, some might say that these are five poems maybe, uh, but they are laments, they are prayers, uh, calling out to God because of the horrors of having your city uh, laid siege to and uh, having your city ransacked and, and having people carried away into exile. And, uh, it, you know, it, we think about what we have been through in, in dealing with COVID-19. Uh, some people, as I just prayed, losing jobs. Some people... Uh, uh, losing family members, uh, but imagine the place where you live is uh, is attacked, and uh, many houses are burned, and uh, and uh, churches like this one are leveled, uh, and I say churches, a church building. Uh, we've been saying over and over, and it's true that the church isn't the brick and mortar. The church is the people that make up the family that happens to worship here. 
But nonetheless, if we're driving down the road and we see that our building has been leveled uh, by, by someone who has attacked our city, uh, that is going to be a, a traumatic experience for us, uh, for those who uh, call this their church home. And so uh, that's what the people of Jerusalem, that's what the people of Judah have been dealing with. And so this is trauma to say the least. And so, and so now we get this series of prayers as a result of this. And so I want to look at uh, Lamentations 1, verses 20 through 22. I'm going to look just at the last three verses of, uh, of chapter 1. See, Lord, how distressed I am. I am in torment within, and in my heart I am disturbed, for I have been most rebellious. Outside, the sword bereaves. Inside, there is only death. People have heard my groaning, but there is no one to comfort me. All my enemies have heard of my distress. They rejoice at what you have done. May you bring the day you have announced so they may become like me. Let all their wickedness come before you. Deal with them as you have dealt with me because of all my sins. My groans are many and my heart is faint. So an element of poetic writing here that, that Jeremiah uh, pins uh, in, in this book. And uh, you know, some have called the book of Lamentations the wailing wall of the Bible. And if you, if you understand that term wailing wall, there is one wall of the second temple, uh, what's known as Herod's temple. Uh, Solomon built the first temple, and then it was destroyed, and then uh, the second temple, temple was built during, uh, during Herod's reign, and, uh, and it was destroyed in A.D. 70 about 40 years after the ministry of Jesus. And so uh, what remains of that temple is just one wall. And so the, uh, so the Jews, some of the Jews in Jerusalem, if you visit there, you will see them gathering. And they have a bunch of music stands set up just because music stands are light and sort of portable, and, and they have them available because some of them have written out their prayers, and they have specific prayers that they pray, and so they will grab something that looks similar to this lectern, but it's a, it's, it's a music stand, and they will take that, and they will take it over near the wall. And then what they will do is they will face that wall, and then sometimes there's sort of a rhythm to their prayers. And so if you see video footage of it, they are kind of they're they're kind of uh, bowing and sort of rocking back and forth. They're kind of kind of bobbing their heads, so to speak. And when they when they go through uh, go through their prayers, and so uh, you know, some would say that that this is the wailing wall of holy scripture. That this this book here, found in the latter part of Old Testament scripture kind of serves that purpose. This, there's not a lot of, if you're looking for happiness, um, you need to look elsewhere than Lamentations. I'll just tell you that. Uh, we're going to get to some happier prayers uh, in Scripture in the weeks ahead, but uh, Lamentations is in the aftermath of, of a tragic event uh, for them. Uh, for us, I think the closest thing we could compare it to would be September 11th, 2001, what we simply refer to as 9-11, and thinking about those two towers, both over 100 stories tall, both symbols of you know, icons within the, uh, the southern Manhattan skyline of New York City. And yet, uh, after they had stood for, I guess, they were built in the early 70s, the, the Twin Towers were, and, and then now all of a sudden, they've been leveled and some of the surrounding buildings kind of went down with them or were at least heavily damaged. And so all of a sudden, you know, what was a, a beautiful uh, autumn morning 
And now all of a sudden you've got thousands of lives between New York City and Washington DC at the Pentagon, thousands of American lives that are gone. And so uh, that's, that's probably the closest thing we can relate to uh, to what uh, of, of how sudden this came. Although it was foretold. I mean, the prophets like Jeremiah said, you know, you got to get right. And if you look at the 12 minor prophets, uh, the vast majority of them are all telling the same thing that Jeremiah was. Some of them were contemporaries. They were fellow preachers at the time that Jeremiah served God. And so they're saying, hey, people, y'all need to quit worshiping these other gods. You need to turn back to Yahweh. Yahweh is the God who saves. Yahweh is the one who brought our people out of Egyptian uh, slavery. And uh, the gods you're working, they're false gods. They're made up gods. Uh, you're not going to get anywhere. You're just angering God. And God had put up with this for generation after generation, century after century, until finally he had enough. And so he was hands off. He said, I'm going to, you know, you've been warned and you haven't listened to the preaching that, that I sent you. And so now I'm just going to let, let it all fall where it may. And, uh, and so here come the Babylonians laying siege to the holy city. And uh, we mentioned last week that Jeremiah is someone who doesn't just say, God, look at them. They're a sinful people. Jeremiah has a tremendous amount of humility. And so Jeremiah is saying, he's saying me, my sin, or us. He includes them. Uh, he includes himself with the people of Judah and their sinfulness. Or he, uh, and sometimes, you know, put, puts it on himself. Uh, uh, you know, right here where he says uh, in verse 22... Let all their wickedness come before you. Deal with them as you have dealt with me because of all my sins. And so we're seeing that continue. That's just Jeremiah's nature. And so we're seeing that in the book of Lamentations as well. All right, in uh, Lamentations chapter 2, I want to look at four verses, 19 through 22. I'm going to look at the end of that, uh, that chapter as well. Arise! Cry out in the night, as the watches of the night begin. Pour out your heart like water in the presence of the Lord. Lift up your hands to Him for the lives of your children who faint from hunger at every street corner. Saying, you know, acknowledge Him, turn back to Him, and lift up your hands in prayer is what Jeremiah is encouraging now. Look, Lord, and consider... Whom have you ever treated like this? Should women eat their offspring, the children they have cared for? Should priest and prophet be killed in the sanctuary of the Lord? Young and old lie together in the dust of the streets. My young men and young women have fallen by the sword. You have slain them in the day of your anger. You have slaughtered them without pity." As you summon to a feast day, so you summoned against me terrors on every side. In the day of the Lord's anger, no one escaped or survived. Those I cared for and reared, my enemy has destroyed. You know, those people, Lord, that I, I watched them grow up, that I cared for them as their preacher, that I ministered, those people that I ministered to, those young men and young women, and now I see them fallen by the sword. I see them lying in the streets, and it's not just the old, it's the young right there with them, Lord. And, uh, and this is just uh, such a fearful prayer here. Uh, it, it's, it's the horrors of the Jerusalem siege. One way that Stacy and I decided to spend Memorial Day uh, is watching uh, uh, the first four episodes of a miniseries that came out. Uh, came out in 2001, 19 years ago. But it's called Band of Brothers, based on the Stephen Ambrose book by the same title. Ambrose is a historian. And he had interviewed a lot of uh, 
uh, a lot of uh, World War II veterans, and then some that he centered on were in Easy Company from the 506th uh, part of the 101st Airborne. They were among our nation's first paratroopers. And, uh, and so he follows them from their training in North Georgia in Camp Tacoa in 1942 all the way to the end of World War II in 1945. And what you're reminded of are the horrors of war. Uh, not only what the, uh, the, the trauma that, that our soldiers had to uh, go through, but then also uh, what a lot of the civilians had to uh, uh, endure. Uh, when, when, you know, when war comes to your doorstep, in the United States, we have been so blessed. Uh, other than the American Revolution and the American Civil War, we've had very little fighting on our soil. Uh, and so we cannot, uh, most of us just cannot relate to what it's like to live in a literal war zone. And, uh, and so the, the, the terrors that you hear uh, Jeremiah describing in Lamentations 2 uh, reminds us of that. Uh, in, in Lamentations 3 verse 8, Even when I call out or cry for help, he shuts out my prayer. He has barred my way with blocks of stone. He has made my paths crooked. And we'll get into that as we move forward. Uh, we're going to spend some time looking at the things that hinder prayer, uh, which I think would be practical and helpful for us. But it, it's also true, and we'll see this as we look at the book of Daniel next week, uh, that the devil tries to thwart our prayers. Uh, that's something, you know, we don't talk a lot about uh, the spiritual element. You know, Paul says to us in Ephesians 6 that our, our battle is not against flesh and blood. Our battle is not against other human beings, like we often think it is. That there is, there is spiritual where, welfare, excuse me, spiritual warfare going on. And that our, our battle is against the dark forces of evil in the heavenly realms, and so, and so, in the spirit world, uh, there is there is good and evil, uh, a war between good and evil being waged. And we, especially in the churches of Christ, we don't talk a lot about the spiritual wor world. And uh, uh, just like you know, we don't talk a lot. We talk about prayer. Uh, and and I, I preached on fasting several months ago, or a few months ago. And, uh, you know, that's something that, that's part of that spiritual discipline, spiritual aspect that in a, a lot of our fellowship or our brotherhood that we've been lacking. Uh, and so uh, trying to do a better job with our congregation about that. But it's a slow process uh, to get people to rethink uh, their spirituality. Uh, but uh, Jeremiah acknowledging here that there are forces at work that try to hinder or thwart our prayers. Uh, I want to look now, the, the last thing we're going to look at tonight is Lamentations uh, chapter 5. Lamentations chapter 5. We're going to look at the first three verses and then we're going to move down and look at verses 13 through 19. So Lamentations 5. Remember, Lord, what has happened to us. Look, and see our disgrace. Our inheritance has been turned over to strangers, our homes to foreigners. We have become fatherless. Our mothers, our, our excuse me, our mothers are widows. And so uh, just uh, everything we had, Lord, it's been turned over to these strangers, these Babylonians that invaded our, our space, invaded our city. Uh, and, and so now, Lord, you know, we, these foreigners, they've got our stuff. You know, uh, nobody likes a thief, do they? Uh, except maybe a thief. Uh, but nobody, nobody likes to have something that you worked hard for. And then somebody just comes along and takes it. That they just steal from you. And it, it's a frustrating feeling. It's a helpless feeling. Uh, Stacy and, uh, and I had 
I mean, she had this nice uh, concrete pot that she would put like plants in, like ferns and things like that. And it was right next to the back door over at the parsonage. And we got home one night and she said, the pot's gone. And I said, what do you mean? She said, the pot that, we, that I had a fern set, set in, she said, that, it's gone. And of course, this is not something that could blow away in the wind. I mean, this is a concrete pot that was like a, a couple of feet tall. I mean, this thing had some heft to it. Uh, you know, it would have taken hurricane force or tornado, a tornado kind of wind to have blown this thing away. Uh, and so we came in, I believe we'd been to, like to Nashville that night, and came in and it was just gone. Somebody decided, hey, I like that and I want it. I can't think of any other reason that, you know, I don't know if somebody was looking for a, a gift for grandma or for their mother or their wife. I don't know. I, I just, you know, but somebody simply, it was there when we left and it was gone when we got home. And, uh, you know, not something we've lost any sleep over. Uh, but it's just that frustrating feeling like somebody was right at our back door and, and you know, took something that belonged to us. And so many of you know what that's like or if so you've had a break-in. Uh, that's especially frustrating because it's like some, somebody that was uninvited, you know, came into your home. And so it, there's a, a feeling of violation there. And, and that's, what, that's what this lament is kind of hearkening to, is uh, Jeremiah saying, uh, you know, remember, Lord, what has happened to us. Our inheritance, everything we'd worked so hard for, everything we built with our own hands, and, uh, and it's now been turned over to strangers. Uh, there's foreigners living in our homes, and, and uh, our children have died. We've become fatherless, and... Uh, our mothers are now widows because of what's going on here. Skipping down to verse 13. Young men toil at the millstones. Boys stagger under loads of wood. The elders are gone from the city gate. The young men have stopped their music. Joy is gone from our hearts. Our dancing has turned to mourning. The crown has fallen from our head. Woe to us, we have sinned. Because of this, our hearts are faint. Because of these things, our eyes grow dim. For Mount Zion, which lies desolate, with jackals growling, oh, prowling over it. You, Lord, reign forever. Your throne endures from generation to generation. And so Jeremiah there is, is acknowledging, Lord, you know, it's bad. It's bad, but it, it, it's bad because we sinned. There, the last line of verse 16, Woe to us, for we, and he's including himself there once again, for we have sinned. And so this is a prayer that includes a healthy dose of repentance. And, uh, you know, we often have to hit rock bottom uh, before we turn back to God. And so the people of Judah uh, have certainly hit rock bottom with uh, the Babylonian exile. And then that last line, uh, or that last verse that we read there, you, Lord, reign forever. Your throne endures from what? From generation to generation. That God, we know that with all this, you're still on the throne. And so God, we just pray that you'll forgive us for our sins and that you will make all this right. And then we know that 70 years later, he does just that. That there's a period, and that would have been about uh, 70 years, about three generations worth uh, for the Hebrew nation. And then the Babylonians are taken over, uh, you know, they were, they were the, the largest force uh, in this region of the planet at this time. And uh, then, then they are, are uh, uh, basically, they give way to the, the Medes and Persians. And so it's a Persian king that allows the exiles to start returning uh, back to Jerusalem some 70 years later. And uh, we're not done talking about the exile because the exile 
as I mentioned several weeks ago, if you have to name the, the four or five biggest events, most significant events in the Old Testament, uh, the exile would certainly be among those. Uh, so much of Old Testament scripture is devoted to warning the people against the exile and then lamenting the exile after it takes place. And so, uh, and so, you know, you might think, well, here we are all these thousands of years later. What does the exile mean to us? It's been, you know, 2,500 or whatever years ago. Uh, it's a warning to us to deal with the sin in our life. It's a warning to us, a reminder to us, I should say, maybe, uh, to not, uh, not allow ourselves to be overtaken by the false gods. Uh, in our nation, consumerism is uh, a major false god. Uh, I think lust, lust after things, lust after uh, people, uh, sexuality, uh, those can, can be gods. Uh, anything uh, that, that finds us taking so much of our time uh, and devoting it to something uh, is often unhealthy. And so that is something for us to be aware of. And it's something I challenge you or encourage you to be aware of uh, as you look at your own life, as you look at your own spirituality uh, in the next several days. And take stock, take inventory. How do I spend my time? How do I spend my money? You know, where does my money go? Is it going for things that are healthy? Or is it going for things that just serve me? And maybe don't serve me in a way that is, that is godly. And so these are things that we have to be aware of in our own lives. And so I encourage you to take stock of that, to be aware of that, uh, to be people who learn how to lament when things are tough. I'm, uh, I spent some time, just before we started recording this this evening, I uh, spent some time on the phone with a mother and daughter and uh, up in Kentucky, and I'm going to be traveling to Kentucky tomorrow uh, to do the funeral of a gentleman uh, who passed away this past weekend. And so uh, I would uh, appreciate your prayers as Stacy and I travel back and forth tomorrow and that, uh, that, uh, that I can provide words of comfort to a, a man who was very, very faithful. Uh, May God bless you uh, in the days ahead. Have a good night.